Good afternoon. This is Kayla Bradham, and you're listening to the Legacy After the Locker Room podcast with today's guest, Kyle Offrey. Kyle, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's start right away with talking about how people can get in contact with you. I know you're popular in the world of uh, business, Kyle. What are the best ways to reach you? Um, either through any of my social media platforms. I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Twitter, um, or just my basic, I have a personal email and a work email. So any of those really work. All right, awesome. So guys, I'm just gonna go right off of Kyle's LinkedIn profile. Former NFL tight end, business executive, innovative entrepreneur, investor, Kyle has developed a powerful network throughout his professional sports career. He's an entrepreneur, first class executive with strong ties to the NFL, NFL alumni, football from the grassroots up and the world of business and sports. Kyle is the VP of sales of Game Breaker, one of Inc. Magazine's top 10 fastest growing manufacturing companies, resulting in triple digit growth three years in a row. Kyle handles a national sales team business development, key accounts, and building strong relationships and partnerships with the brand. Kyle, holy smokes, that is true. I have 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. I'm maxed out. And you and I have been connected for quite a while. I've been watching what you've been doing in business. You're well connected and you're seen as an expert in the industry. Welcome to Legacy After the Locker Room. Thank you, Kayla. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So, Let's talk a little bit, Kyle, about transitioning out of pro sports. Uh, you hang up the cleats, and, and what's next? How did you get into Game Breakers? Well, there was a transition period when I got out of football of I don't know what I want to do. Um, and there's also that period of are you really done playing football? Is this the end of my career? Am I going to get another shot next year? So there's that time frame of not sure what you want to do, what you're going to be doing, what your future holds. During that time, I took a position with D1 Sports Training. It's a national gym organization. They train athletes. They have locations all over the country. There were a few locations in uh, North and South Carolina, which is where my parents are, that I got involved with. And when I was with them at D1, uh, that's when I was reached out to by uh, Game Breaker as well. So it was a, a transition for me in that world, which got me some business skills, some management skills right off the top out of football. And it was a fairly easy transition into my role at Game Breaker, which was a, a small grassroots startup company that's really grown exponentially over the last few years. And it's become a, a, a nationwide brand. So just uh, a lot of learning, a lot of hands-on, a lot of work, a lot of long hours, and it's pretty much uh, the formula that I that worked for me anyway. Yeah, well, I think that's interesting because we talk about a lot of hard work, a lot of hours. That same ethic is really what I'm sure partway at least got you into the NFL to start with. So I always like to think in terms of a parent, um, creating hope and possibility for kids. We know a very, very small percentage of kids actually make it into full sports scholarships, much more the NFL, NBA, NHL, et cetera. What is your advice for kids in high school, college, looking to make it big? Well, my advice for them is to be the hardest worker in the room and be the hardest worker in the room consistently. So not just one day a week, not just two days a week. It has to be every day, all the time. That's something that was really harped on big by Bill Belichick, who's the coach of the Patriots. His biggest coaching philosophy across the board is consistent, consistent effort every single day. And that's a big thing that I feel that a lot of athletes, especially in, in youth, middle school, high school, they lack that consistency. There's a lot of talented kids out there. There's a lot of kids that work hard sometimes, but there's very few that work hard all the time and every day they step 
on the field for practice or on the court or in the weight room for workouts, they go 100% and they're there, they're in the room, they're in the moment, they're trying to get better every day. And that's what I would say. There's, there's a lot of distractions in today's world with cell phones, technology, social media, all that needs to, kids need to really focus on distancing from that and what their goals are. And that when they're focused on their goals, when they're at, again, practice, games, workouts, they need to be focused on that. Uh, and, and that's what my suggestion would be. Yeah, I love it. I left corporate America to teach high school language arts. And for many of the same things that you're talking about, just really preparing young adults to be consistent and work hard so that when they enter the workplace, they're seeing that. And one of the things that I worked really hard with my teams was that sort of constant and never ending improvement, getting better 1% every day. I'm sure you can relate to that. Yes, absolutely. My, a big quote that I like is, you know, when people always ask you, what does it takes to be successful? My big thing is, it, you know, first of all, you have to define success, right? Everyone's goals are different. And for me, success is basically, you know, closing the gap from where you are and where you want to be. And you have to do that every single day. Uh, you have to get better every single day because you're either going forward or you're going backwards. There's in the right direction to get to where I want to be and if you're not constantly reminding yourself of that or you're not surrounding yourself with people that constantly push you to be better every day it, you know you're going to have a, a tougher battle uh, through your career yeah absolutely and I think that's so interesting I, I had a business meeting with Chuck Samora this week Chuck travels the globe as a public speaker. And one of the things he does is he, he speaks to high school students and says, how many of you guys want to be successful? And all of those kids raise their hand and he asks them why. And they say, you know, to make a lot of money or to make my parents proud. He gets the same four or five answers, he said, but he has to actually break down what success looks like. And some, you know, more than anything, success is being the person you were created to be, right? Yes. So I, I love yeah, what you're doing. There's that and it not necessarily not I'm driving, so I apologize. <laughs> it's um, okay. I got yeah, you. I would, can you can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I would I would say it's it's not only being the person that you're to be, but there's also people out there who not necessarily who you're made to be or born to be, but who you want to be, right? It doesn't always, you know, people, I believe people have the choice to choose their own futures and their own destiny. And maybe you come from a family of dentists and you're born to be a dentist, but you don't want to be a dentist. Just because your dad's a dentist and your grandfather's a dentist doesn't mean that you have to be a dentist. If you want to be a football player or a whatever, a lawyer, I think that you should. I think people should follow what makes them happy and, and what they're passionate about because I think that's more important in terms of happiness and, and being happy with who you are and, and self-aware of who you are and what you want to be and what you want to do in the world. I think that's more important than necessarily who you were born to be. So I, I think there's people will go through stages in their life and transition in life and who you want to be might change. It might change every year. It might change, you know, in a week from now, who knows? Yeah, Kyle, I think that's really interesting. And I'm going to turn that question right on you. When and how did you decide that you wanted to be an NFL football player? I always wanted to, I always wanted to play pro sports. I always wanted to play either in the NFL or the NBA. I'm a Knicks fan in New York. Uh, but when I grew up, I, I grew up playing basketball even more than football, and I always wanted to be in the NBA. So I had that drive pro pro early on. My success on the football field. And my, 
Yeah, Kyle, I, I know that you're driving and I know that you're super, uh, super busy going from one event to the other. And I appreciate you taking time out today to be on the podcast. Yeah. On my end, at least, yeah, that faded out. Can I ask you to try that one more time for our listeners? Yeah, my... I I always wanted to be a professional athlete. I always, my goal was always the NBA. Uh, that, I, that's the football field was always greater than my success on the basketball field. So football was my path. Um, I, was, I was, I was naturally, I had natural ability to, to, to play football and uh, added a lot of hard work and determination to get to, to the, to where I wanted to be. I didn't necessarily make it as far as I had hoped in the NFL. I didn't really see the field. I didn't get a lot of playing time. I didn't have some long, outstanding career. But uh, to go from where I was and, and my background with, with my experience level in high school and college to even stepping on the NFL field or signing an NFL contract was, you know, in the big picture looking back now, it was pretty, pretty uh, remarkable uh, you know, from what I had to deal with. So, you know, it, it was a, it was a tough journey. It was a long journey, but it was worth every moment of it. And the lessons I learned through that journey, follow me to, through, you know, today in the, in the business world and, and everything I do with my, with work, with business, with my family. So uh, I don't regret a second of it. I love it. Kyle, this is a great moment for me to mention um, when we talk about Big, big dreams, big goals. There's a group of people who have just as big of goals and just as big of dreams as everybody else. And that is the folks competing in the Special Olympics. And I have asked all of our podcast guests this year to donate an autographed item to the Special Olympics that they can offer um, at a charity event in an auction. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart. You are going to donate a autographed jersey. Is that correct? Yes, it is. I think that's so fantastic. And when we talk about creating hope and possibility and chasing your dreams, you're a great example of what that looks like. And on behalf of the Legacy After the Locker Room podcast, I want to say thank you for helping somebody else live out their dreams. Super cool. No, thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. So I want to take a minute and talk a little bit about Game Breakers. We're almost halfway through the podcast already. And I love what you're doing in business. Even in our pre-chat before the show, I said, I'm thrilled about a professional athlete transitioning out of pro sports and into another career. Because in my personal life as a sports business consultant, that's my niche. That's what I work with. So my love language, I got you. But your nine to five day job, Game Breaker. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with them and what they're doing for sport, please. Yeah, so Game Breaker is, is the original inventor of the soft shell helmet. A lot of people uh, have seen the soft shell helmet for flag football and seven on seven football with the growth of those two aspects of the game of football, as well as the big push to reduce contact, reduce helmet to helmet contact, reduce contact in the off season. It's been a very, very big growth for the company over the last five, six, seven years in terms of just obviously the recognition of, of what our product is and what it does and how to use it. We've also added a lot of product lines uh, along the lines of player safety uh, and not just in football. So we have uh, our soft shell helmet, which is football, rugby, water polo, multiple other sports. We have soft shell shoulder pads that we also wear in football. We actually just launched uh, at the beginning, uh, well, last year, but officially at the beginning of this year. Uh, we have an aura. It's called a, it's an aura headband. It's a uh, padded headband that soccer players can wear and other athletes, basketball you name it, uh, they wear it around their head like a headband, except it's lined with our D3O technology, which is a 